In this video, I'll be fixing free 3D renders sent by the community, showing you how just a few small changes can completely transform the final image. Let's dive in. Starting with image number one from Terras Jamdar. What's the first thing you notice in this render? If it's the floating nature assets, you're not alone. Let's fix that first. So I just cleaned that up and we ended up with a much cleaner picture. The next thing I'll change for this is the camera angle. While the angle looks good, it feels slightly distant. A more human level perspective or a closer vantage point could create a stronger connection. So get closer to the building and adjust the camera height. So we have the building centered vertically and horizontally. This makes it feel more relatable. Now it's a matter of hierarchy because we have a lot of cars in the foreground that are drawing too much of our attention. So we reduce and strategically place the number of cars on the scene. Next, I would improve the lighting. We've got midday lighting, which when it's not done right, can look quite unflattering. It tends to make things look very flat. Let's reset the effects for a clean slate. Golden hour is an easy trick, but midday shots can also look great if done right. Here's how to fix it. First, I add back the clear midday sky. Then rotate the sky so we have parts of the facade in shadow and others in light for better contrast. As you can see, now we have a much better understanding of the building's shapes. Next, I added a precipitation effect to give more material variation to the ground and gives that just rain effect. But now we need to talk about those trees. When you have layers to organize your scene and hide assets that can slow down your computer, there's no value in not using the high quality trees from Mumia. As an artist, you want to always showcase your best work and have your renders look the more realistic you can. So you should always use good, high quality assets. Luckily for us, Lumion has a bunch of them in their library. So I've just swapped out those trees for better looking ones, with better details. Now for some technical problems with the ground. Right now, it's just one blunt texture. Even a brand new asphalt won't look like this. So I just swapped out with the asphalt textures from the Polygon website. By the way, the link for it will be in the description. Then I adjusted the precipitation effect again and added road markings, which you can find in the decal section in Lumion. We are almost there and I just think we can improve the materials. This will be my take on the scene, but I'll change it to some more modern materials. Finally, a little trick. Putting some trees just off frame so that you can see some of their branches to frame better the buildings works wonders. I added the autumn colors effect to automatically add color variation to all the nature assets in the scene. There is nothing exactly the same in nature and this is a great and fast way to do that. Another thing I did was to make the cars slightly with motion blur. Not too much, because it's daytime and even the most basic cameras can capture a moving car, but just enough so it's not super sharp. And the last thing I did was add some camera imperfections, like vignetting, a chromatic aberration, camera glare and sensor noise. Check this out, here's the original render. It has flat lighting, clear composition and distracting elements. Now let's look at the final version. Better focus, realistic materials and a much stronger story. See how just a few changes can make a massive difference. I'm testing this new video format and I need your feedback. If you want more render reviews, comment more reviews below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Next up, we've got a bedroom interior by Pedro Grimaldi. Creating a good interior render is mostly understanding how interior design works and getting good assets and materials. The first thing I notice is that your windows are way too big and the exterior is an endless flat grassland, which doesn't happen anywhere in real life. Now, since these big windows tell me it's an apartment, I guess from a high-rise building, I actually went and remodeled the whole room and added new windows with more details that seem more fitting for the environment. Next, let's move the camera. Instead of shooting straight, let's make it at an angle so we can see more of the room and make it feel bigger. This is actually a trick you can use pretty much everywhere. When you shoot to a corner, it makes the room feel larger. In the project Pedro sent me, all the 3D models come together in one single file. The bed, rug, paintings, I recommend separating everything with the origin at 000. This way, you can easily adjust placement inside Lumion 
and save the 3D models in your library for later use in other projects. Another thing, and when looking closely to his render, is that the baseboard looks like it's made of one piece together with a wall. Probably it was just extruded out of the wall. My issue with this is that in real life, you only see small gaps everywhere. Nothing is just one piece. So I added the baseboards, but with a small gap between the floor and the wall. You can see it creates this tiny contact shadow that really adds up to the realism of the scene. If you remove the small gap, you can see how it loses that small but important detail. Again, it's all about details. Look at these curtains. They looked glued to the ceiling. To fix this, let's add a new ceiling with a gap between the ceiling and the wall, so there's a place for the curtains to go. And also leave one centimeter gap between the ceiling and the wall for that important contact shadow. Let's add back some curtains. This will help to reduce and control the amount of light entering the room and help anchor the shot. I've also changed the background to a city shot. This feels more fitting for a high-rise apartment. The best way to do this is to add a plane in the background and keep it perpendicular to the camera. This way, the perspective will always be correct. And by the way, this background I've created with AI. It's really simple. I just uploaded an image to ChatGPT and told it to create a new prompt for an image generator based on the image I uploaded. Then take that prompt and go to your favorite AI image generator app and just paste it there. In seconds, I have plenty of options to choose from. Super easy and you can create a huge variety of backgrounds this way. If you like this tip, don't forget to give the video a like. This really helps YouTube share my videos with other people who might find this content interesting. All right, it's looking good, but we are missing a couple of things. We see a lot of green reflections from the endless grassland. In a city, that won't happen so much. So just replace the terrain texture with something else that's not so green. And it's good to go. The next thing is adding a balcony. I noticed that many of these buildings with these types of floor to ceiling windows have a balcony and this will help to sell the background better as well. And this way, we are looking at a much wider space, not only staring through the window. All right, now the lighting needs to be changed. Feels a bit dark and moody. Not good for an inviting interior presentation. I'll add the sky and clouds effect and adjust the parameters. The background looks too sharp and to help fix this, we can add a fog effect with a slightly warm color to help create some separation and to create some depth. And by the way, I cover all of this and much more in my Lumion Render course. If you want to take your renders to the next level, I invite you to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Next, we need objects. The bed in the initial render doesn't have the correct proportions, as it is too wide and too short. I would swap it out with a quality 3D model since it's one of the foundations for a render that looks real. Add some nightstands, some table lamps and other decor pieces. I'm getting these objects from sites like 3D Sky or Dimensiva. It's a great source for high quality assets. Looking at this nightstand, I actually like this wood slated material. So I added it to the bed frame as well and made it a little bit taller. I've also changed the camera position a bit and changed the aspect ratio to 3 by 2 horizontally. This helps focus more on the bed itself. Now, I'll add a large rug to help anchor the bed. And lastly, I would add a chair in the foreground that helps to tell there's more to this room that we don't see in this shot. But it's there. Materials can work for you or against you. It's not only about picking the right ones, but also the ones with better harmony for the scene you are working on. Starting with the floor, if you noticed, we can see each individual floorboard model on the ground. And each set of boards has a material ID, so I can give plenty of material variation. I have a set of wood textures I'll use for each board individually to make it look like this. And as always, if you'd like to learn how to make this type of floors for your renders, stay tuned because very soon I'll be posting the tutorial you all asked for. So don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when my new videos go live. Now, we need the material on the wall. I changed the color to a warm light beige and used the plaster material. You can find plenty on sites like polygon.com or textures.com. One tip for material setup is to make it build with effects mode. This way, the result will be very close to the final render. 
For the curtains, I just used the first material that you can find in the fabric section in Lumin's library. From here, I just tweak the opacity, the subsurface scattering and color. I also added the wood material to the nightstands and bed frame. And this is how it looks so far. Next, I added materials to the bed. The bed sheets are the color with the wrinkles normal map applied to them, and the rest is a fabric material. And if you like this and want to learn more about materials, check my video up there where I break down step by step how to create realistic materials in Lumion. I've also added a couple of plants to the balcony and shared. This helps to tell a story. Now, we could have finished the scene here, but I feel it's lacking contrast. And let me tell you a trick you can do to add more contrast to the shadows. Do you see the opposite wall to the window? Just make that wall darker and immediately the shadows become darker, making your scene with more contrast. Finally, there's one last thing that could improve this scene, camera imperfections. Again, like glare, chromatic aberrations, depth of field, and vignetting help to mimic real-world cameras, making it look more like a real photo. So, that's how I would improve this render. Here's the before and the after. And here's them side by side. Next up, we have this image by Daria Fischina, who wanted to render a residential home. First, we need to identify where is this house located. It's right in the middle of a forest or a residential area that has some vegetation. If it's the first, then we need to make some fixes. Right now, we only have this billboard background trees as a background, which is great, but that's not how the vegetation looks in real world. Always use referenced photos. We can see that the vegetation is much more dense and with lots of variation. Every bush, tree or plant is thriving to get some sunlight. This leads to a denser, more layered appearance in the forest. To fix this, I would add more vegetation to make the scene feel more realistic and natural. Now, the camera feels a bit too tight, so I'll move it so we have a more 45 degree angle, giving us a little bit more context of the surroundings. By the way, before we continue, if you don't have Lumion yet, you can get a free trial on their website. And if you're a student, you can also get a free student license. I'll leave the links in the description below. Now, let's change the grass. This 3D grass from Lumion is great, but not for a lawn where the owners would like to keep it short and well-maintained. And there are some areas where the grass is clipping through the concrete. I would switch it to a terrain grass instead and adjust the height and wilderness. This will make it feel like some thought was put into it. For added realism, I added some surface decals to make it look like the grass has some drier patches of grass than others. Adding these details can make the scene look and feel much more real. Next, I would replace some of the vegetation assets that don't look as good. You can find high quality ones in the fine detail plant section. Now, I would adjust the lighting. The current lighting feels a bit dull and doesn't show the many colors we have on the scene. So I would replace that with a morning sky, giving a nice contrast and creating vibrant colors. I would add some trees in the foreground to cast some shadows that will help to steer the focus towards the house. Next, we need to adjust materials. The concrete ground was too light and without any contrast. So I made it darker, added round corners to the edges and introduced a bit of weathering as well. This black metal material has the colors 000, since in real life, there's nothing completely black or completely white. Always use a dark gray or a light gray. With this in mind, I replaced it with a new material. Lastly, I added a couple of more bushes to the foreground and push the pine tree as well so we can see some of its branches in the top left corner. Here's the before and after. By looking at real photos for inspiration, tweaking the textures a little and improving the lighting, the scene looks much more real and nice to look at. And here's with some AI post-production done in Magnific AI. I've done a full video covering the process, you can watch it here and I'll leave the link in the description below too. That's it guys, let me know what you think in the comments and if you want me to continue this series of videos. If you enjoyed this new video, hit like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.